Hello. Welcome to day two of your anxiety relief um, challenge. And today we're talking about breastfeeding safety. So let me just make sure we're good. So the biggest question I get asked is how to know if an herb is safe while breastfeeding. So if you're breastfeeding, let me know. And I'd love to know if you're afraid to use herbs. So this is the biggest concern I see with new moms, that there's a fear of using herbs, but there's also a fear of using medication. So then we're just stuck. We're stuck with stress, anxiety, overwhelm, and not doing anything. So today we'll uncover what resources I use to know a botanical is safe. And this is hard because if you're searching online, you never know what is safe and there's so much fear around it. So I hope that we can unpack that fear a little bit today. What herbs to avoid if you do have allergies or your child's um, father has allergies, where to purchase botanicals from and what age can you start using plus dosing and adverse reactions. So the biggest concern when using herbal medicine while you're breastfeeding is these adverse reactions. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So in the comment area, let me know your biggest concern, your fear with using herbs while breastfeeding. I'd love to help you. So number one, what resources do I use to know a botanical is safe? A lot of these resources are not online and the books are quite expensive. So they, um, I'm certified through Dr. Aviva Ram and her book is Botanical Medicine for Women's Health. She references the German Commission E, which we'll look at in one moment, and tells us if a botanical is safe, likely safe, um, or there's not much um, studies done on it. So that is the one I use the most. The second one I use the most is the Botanical Safety Handbook down here on the right hand side. So if you're fascinated and want to learn more, you can take a screenshot of this. And these are the books you can reference when using medications while breastfeeding. Unfortunately, online, it is hard to find the information. So the American Herbal Products Association um, classifies the herbs with class one safe, Class two goes into different categories such as external only. So for example, when you have mastitis, you can use comfrey root salve externally, but you would never take it internally. So you also want to know if you're using an herb externally and for what reason, and then if you're taking it internally as a tea or a tincture. So it makes a difference. Um, I So sometimes you hear me reference class one, class two, or... Um, level one, level two. So class three can be used only under guidance of qualified professionals and four, there's insufficient data. So you would probably avoid class three and class four botanicals under this guide. The German Commission E is the second reference I use and majority of it does come from Dr. Viva Ram's book. Level one being the safest, no adverse effects observed in infants of lactating mothers. Level two is safer. Level three is moderately safe. And four, there's a risk. And five is contraindicated. So level, um, for example, St. John's War, women want to use for depression, but it is a level three, level four. So now you have to weigh the risks of it's, you know, do you take something that's a little riskier or do you wait? And um, those are the challenges moms are facing. But with that said, many women are using St. John's wort, particularly in a blended tincture and having great success. So this just gives you some guidelines to follow, but also listen to your own gut and your own intuition as well. And then the American Academy of Pediatrics has its own safety table where no data compatible, compatible, but use caution and strongly discouraged. So with these books, you'll find those different um, safety guidelines within them to determine if medication is safe for you or um, a botanical is safe for you during the breastfeeding years. If you have an additional reference, please let me know and I can add that to my list. 
The second thing you want to look at is do you or your child's father have any allergies? And the biggest allergic reaction would be um, the chamomile family or Astaraceae, which we'll talk about in a moment. And an allergic reaction means that maybe you or your child's father gets itchy eyes, runny nose, maybe you break out in the skin, and then the worst would be an anaphylactic shock, of course. So that would be the biggest concern when it comes to infants, babies, toddlers. Um, I once gave Eva stinging nettles when she was just a baby and she had a little bit of redness in her skin. So then I stopped giving it to her. So that's an example of really watching your children when you're taking herbal medicine and when you're offering it to them so that you are really watching your child and looking for those reactions. Teas and tinctures could be different. So she may have done better with a tincture of stinging nettles if I felt she needed it, but the tea could have been too strong for her at the time. So those are things to consider, right? Don't, you know, kick it out the door really fast if it's not working for you. What also happens is women sometimes take supplements of ashwagandha, but then when they take a tincture, they have a better response. So it does make a difference whether it's a supplement, a tea, or a tincture, and just keep that in mind when you're using herbal medicine. So the number one um, allergic response tend to be this Astara Sayi family and chamomile, which is the number one botanical for babies, is in this family. So if you already know you or um, your child's father has this allergy, then of course you would avoid chamomile. And then also you would um, avoid, potentially avoid, avoid these other botanicals in the family. Now keep in mind, chamomile in a homeopathic blend may be okay. So they make each of these natural remedies differently. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. That did come up um, because Arnica flowers, right, is in this family. You may want to avoid it, but Arnica topically as a homeopathic blend or taking homeopathy internally may be okay for you because it's so diluted. Um, it's also different if it's flowers versus the root. For example, echinacea root is great as a um, antiviral, great when you're sick, but it's in this family, right? So you would avoid any tincture where they're using the flower but echinacea root may work for you. So just keep that in mind. It depends whether it's the flower or the root. Let me know if you have any questions or you can screenshot this as well if you happen to have this allergy. We already talked about whether you're using them internally or externally. So keep that in mind, right? So if a botanical, um, for example, mastitis, these are suggested herbs for mastitis, but comfrey root salve is great for mastitis. You would just wipe off the breast before breastfeeding again. And again, you want to use it externally, but you would not use it internally. So I know it's challenging and I write about this. I also on my YouTube channel, Tara J. Gregorio, you'll see lots of videos for breastfeeding moms because it is a scary time. And then it's, it is very confusing, especially if you're trying to use the herbs or learn the herbs at the same time, um, at the same time you're breastfeeding, right? So it's a very busy time of the month as well, or of the season, I guess I should say. Um, so here are some remedies you can use for mastitis. Always start with the teas first and see how your baby responds. And then I would move to tinctures as well. So at what age can you start using botanicals? It's another question I get. Keep in mind any medication, anything that you take, it's 1% of the your dose could be going through the breast, fil breast milk up to 10%, 1 to 10%. So it varies. It varies on the time of the month on your enzymes, how you process your food, um, you process medications through your organs. So the safest botanical is to start with a cup of chamomile tea 
And that could be day one. That could be, if you know you don't have an allergy, you could start drinking teas right away. That is the most nourishment filled with vitamins and minerals. And then when you're comfortable, you can move on to tinctures or even homeopathy is quite safe when you know how to use it as well. So my children, I started at about three months, actually probably before that, probably about two months. Um, and the greatest challenge I had was the fear of my husband, you know, his um, fear with the herbal medicine. So you may encounter that as well, is that your partner is not on board with using herbal medicine. And that's another big challenge. So at two weeks, the baby's liver can metabolize ingested chemicals and four to five months, the kidney clearance is full. So you just want to be careful with preemies because they may have a different capacity for this, but you can start with teas first, start with one at a time, always watching your baby for these adverse reactions, which we'll talk about in a moment. And if your family is prone to allergies, then yeah, you want to use, definitely want to use more caution. But the better question is not so much are the herbs safe, it's um, are, are the herbs safe while breastfeeding, but are the herbs, the quality that you're purchasing safe? So when you're using it as um, food or tea, it's the safest way to introduce these botanicals, unless you have um, these ragweed allergies that you're concerned about. So you always wanna look for a botanical that has all the labeling, the full name, the Latin name of the botanical, the expiration date, dosing suggestions, which we'll talk about in a moment, and any red flags. So whenever you're purchasing herbs, make sure that you're comfortable with who you're purchasing from. You're asking where the botanicals are grown. Are they checking for mold, heavy metals, sulfites? Um, so are they checking their products? Because that's extremely important as well. And I tend to go to Mountain Rose Herbs, but there's certainly many, many companies that are um, trustworthy. And I have a post on my blog about um, seven companies to know and trust. And I additionally added more. So it's up to like 13 or 15 companies that you could look for botanicals to order from. If you'd like to share where you order your herbs from, let us know. So again, I typically do go to Mountain Rose Herbs, um, but Frontier Co 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 Op, sorry, Co Op, um, Gaia Herbs I love, Herbalist and Alchemist I love as well, and Strictly Medicinal Seeds. Um, you could order seeds and grow your own botanicals. And it's nice for your children to see these herbs growing, like chamomile and lavender. Um, so that they can smell them, they can touch them, they can make the tea themselves as they get older. And you'll be amazed, my children are now nine, that they know which herbs to use when they get sick. And that's a beautiful part of introducing herbal remedies now. I was saying this is another big question. So it varies, right? We can say one to two cups of herbal tea a day. But the tinctures, let's use a lot of caution when you're breastfeeding. So you could just start with one drop two to three times a day and see how you both respond. And then two drops and then three drops. You can work your way up to actually 30 to 60 dropper, dr single drops, which is one to two dropper fulls two to three times a day. So that's a lot. Um, I would start less, you know, just do single drops to begin with, keep track, make notes. And then also you're looking at why you're taking these tinctures. So what's the purpose of the tincture? And then um, see if you're accomplishing that as well. With moms, I breastfeeding moms, I always suggest using one herb at a time and then adding in a second herb if you're very concerned. It is the blended herbs that will give you the best results. So just keep that in mind. You could also use powders or supplements. Um, supplements, I would say, is not ideal because we don't know how long they've been in the package. We don't know the quality of them. I do like the Gaia supplements, though, um, but the quality is extremely important. So just keep that in mind that with a tincture, you can have um, you can see the herb. It's sitting in uh, liquid form right there. 
So this is the biggest thing when you start using botanicals and you're breastfeeding or botanicals and with your children. So you're looking for these adverse reactions. It's drowsiness, dizziness, followed by vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea, face flushing, itchy skin. So if any of these reactions happen, you stop the herbal medicine depending on the person who it is, you could address your liver health with milk thistle, um, or you might just reach for the Benadryl right away, and then that would help soothe that response. So any adverse reactions in yourself or your child, then you would stop that. Um, my training with Pika Trenkel, she mentioned how she was taking valerian root to calm her nervous system. And she looked down, she was nursing and she looked down and um, her baby started falling asleep, like getting conked out. So she knew that was too much valerian root. So it was passing through the breast milk. So you want to always, as you naturally are, observe your child and look for any of these adverse reactions for yourself and your child. And then, um, of course, stop the remedy, make note of it and don't use it again until maybe they get older. So these reactions don't tend to occur frequently, especially if you're using botanicals that are safe during the breastfeeding years. And it tends to be, it tends to happen in older women that are 50 or older because things start slowing down. There's liver and kidney concerns. There's also enzyme deficiencies as well as we get older. So for your age and time in your life, these idiosyncratic reactions don't typically occur. Um, they most often occur it, when we get older, um, if you're incorporating alcohol with the tinctures, and if you have um, women tend to have these reactions more than men and using any additional medication as well. So the adverse reactions are not typically common. So that's that should give you some faith and trust to know that these work. So these are two blog posts on my website, taragregorio.com that you could look up. Don't trust botanicals. Here are seven companies to love. So then I list all the companies that I trust and use. And four creative ways to use tinctures with kids. I go over the exact dosing for babies. If you're giving a baby directly a tincture, but also you might keep that in mind for you if you're taking the tinctures internally and breastfeeding. So let me know if you have any questions about using herbal medicine during the breastfeeding years. This is day two of our anxiety relief challenge, helping moms overcome stress and anxiety. If you missed day one, I am going to post it. Um, I had some technical difficulties, so I'm going to re-record it. So we're um, splitting up into five days. Monday will be the fifth day. We're going to skip the weekend. And then at the uh, uh, Thursday, which is tomorrow, the Present Mama will open, which is my six-week group coaching course where I'm helping moms reduce anxiety, even if you're breastfeeding. And you're also welcome to join if you're not breastfeeding. Okay, that was a question that's being asked. The remedies are similar. I just wanted to open it to women that are breastfeeding so that you know these botanicals are safe to use. Plus, there's many holistic practices we'll be doing that um, do not involve herbal medicine at all. So it's six week group coaching with myself. We'll be starting on January 30th and we'll meet each week to answer your questions on how to use herbs and homeopathy to overcome anxiety. And the doors are open tomorrow at 11. The first three people will get the biggest discount. So make sure you're on my email list. And then um, the rest of the participants will save over $200. So be here Thursday, tomorrow at 11. And we'll also be going over the Present Mama framework tomorrow after doors open. So let me know if you have any questions about breastfeeding and herbal medicine. And um, day one, we talked about how to stop intrusive thoughts.